Hello and welcome to my internship project-based course car modeling week two bonus video. This week I'll be discussing some car modeling techniques. Um, I'll be starting with talking about how to add details to a part of a car body without disrupting the edge flow on the outer part of the car body. Um, and also how to convert corners and, in, and irregular areas on the car body that are not four-side quads into four-side quads to alleviate uh, creases and bumps and, and unwanted flows in your geometry. And then I'll wrap up with a conclusion. The first car modeling technique I'm going to cover is how to add detail to interior parts of the car body that, that isn't touching the boundary areas without affecting those boundary areas. So, for example, the crease between a door and another door, right? How to carve in this, um, this scoop here without adding too much resolution to this border area to actually change this geometry so that this border geometry still lines up with this side's border geometry. So here you can see was my side panel that sat up here and I needed to cut out a scoop in it and fill it full of the array of these uh, fins. So if I click on this you can see that I bring him down you can see that they still fit exactly the same. This guy still fits so pivot still fits exactly the same as him even though he still has a little bit more well, the inside, a lot more resolution, but his boundary areas are still the same, even though there's still a few more resolution along the edges. So what's important here is to identify the interior areas that you're going to be modifying, but keeping your boundary areas the same. So I'm not going to extrude in on these areas because these are the boundary areas which will be lining up with the rest of the geometry. So then you can extrude down to make this recessed pit. Um, but if you smooth it, you see that it really smooths out and it makes a very smooth curved recessed pit. So you're going to have to add some more geometry, but keep it minimal so it doesn't change the border geometry and make it not line up with the rest of the car. So the first area to keep in mind is add first add geometry to areas that aren't on the border. So these faces at the bottom, even these side faces, are great to add resolution to first before you hit these boundary areas. So let's try adding some resolution within here and see how that holds the shape better. So I'm going to do an insert edge loop. First one I'll put is in right here. So it starts to hold up the bottom here and here. Now I have a nice straight wall, but the whole thing is still curved. So um, I can run resolution down here and here. Um, but what if I didn't want to continue the resolution all the way at the end down here, as this might affect how this end part curves. Maybe I don't want it affecting that. So I'm going to undo these curves. Now, this is where you can add a piece of resolution. And all I'm going to do is unselect this part, because that's the part I want to keep. <clears throat> and now I have the ending 
over here still highlighted and I could just go to delete that edge. And I could do the same over here and delete that edge up there. And now we have the resolution coming down, defining this area, but not running all the way down. So you can see that he, that this, these two lines I created curve this line when smoothed, but since there's a, it's a very flat area, it's not affecting anything really. So if I click off it, you could see that there's nothing really distorted or changed in this area right here. So that's fine to leave that resolution running up right into here and just leave it, even though it turns these into five-sided. It doesn't matter because this is a very flat, featureless area, so it's not going to affect it. Um, and I left the resolution running here because there's only so much. I could break it. I could cut it here and delete this, these end parts and connect it up to this point. Um, but this part sn sits snugly into the back of this tail light, so I don't think that's a big problem. So we almost have enough straight resolution here. We are just missing resolution along this direction. So here I can move it down back into place, and if I smooth it out, you see that this area stays really straight. There's no bends, no curves, and no features. So actually you could just insert edge loops here and you can see that it's not even really affecting this trans this border transition. It's just staying flat. So let me add edge loops on both sides, the inside and the outside of this wall. And when we smooth it out and bring it up, we have a nice straight kind of bedpan. Nice tight creases all around. And it doesn't distort the geometry on the border or on this big area here. And everything is nice and smooth and ready to put the fins in. And the next modeling technique I'm going to cover is how to convert corners or irregular areas with irregular geometry into quads for plain smoothing. So you can see here that there is a crease that runs along this back bumper down this side and right into this wheel well and it it fades right into the wheel well. So how did I do this is first you are going to need a tight crease here. So I have three lines running right next to each other side by side. You see that here to create this tight crease area right down there. And if you take a look at this corner, what I did was I merged the two outer lines into one and just ran it right into the wheel well. There's two reasons I did that. One is the crease ends here right at the wheel well. And also, you don't want these three lines coming right into the wheel well altogether. They're going to distort this nice curve. They're going to make it, there's going to put a bump into it, a crease right into this area because you have three curves, three lines running right into each other. Um, and the other thing is interesting to note is this middle line, you actually delete it one section before you can do the other two. And why do you do that is when you merge these two lines into one line and you delete the center line, what you get left with is a quad. So you can end this kind of irregular geometry area, which isn't going to end well. It's going to run right into the wheel well. It's going to screw up your curve on your wheel well. And it's supposed to end here anyway. That crease that comes along 
but then how do you resolve it into one line? And this is what this technique is all about, is how to resolve into quads. So this happens a lot in this car body, I found, is that to end this these crease areas is you just delete this middle line in, right before you de delete these outer lines. And what happens is you create a nice little quad to end that crease on. Uh, you can see it up here too. Like I, on this side panel piece, I needed a crease that comes along with the back bumper and it creases and then it just resolves right into the, to the side. There is this crease just ends. So how do you work with that? Well, you see here, I had three lines all lined up with each other to create that tight crease area. You see that? And then it turns into one line, which has no crease. So you have crease turning into no crease. How did I do that again? Again, you can see I took the center line and I ended it one section before I ended the two outer lines, which again makes for a nice little quad, which turns, it's a nice transition area from crease to no crease. And this happens a lot in the corners. So it's a great little technique for creases, corners, sharp edges turning into flat areas. Um, and these two work well. You will get extra geometry when you're, when you're ex creating extra details and extruding different facets into your car you will get this extra geometry. And how do you resolve it? Well, you'll see here, you know, to hold these, these, this little extrusion area where this, these grills are gonna sit, I needed to run some extra lines in the corners to hold these corners a little tighter. But then what do you do with this extra lines? You don't want these lines running the entire length of the car, they're gonna, create creases and ripples and bumps and, and, and forms in your geometry that are not going to want. So here you can see you just you, you run them for a little bit and then you can just end them. And uh, if I didn't have this area down here, I could even run this down here and him down here and, and make a little quad ending. Uh, so these two techniques together work really well for creases, endpoints, sharp edges, extrusions, scoops, any detail you're gonna put on the car body that you kinda of wanna make it look very sharp and defined but not influencing the surrounding area. So I hope this tutorial helps you well with car modeling and gives you some new ideas and new avenues to pursue with your modeling techniques. Thank you.